Today in Beers TV Refacts, we answer, when is it really time to throw that pH probe away? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV Refacts. Today, these probes are 35 to 60 bucks, so when is it really worthwhile to replace them? Some of you are probably doing it too early, and some of you never have, so what's the right answer? Well, that depends on two things, the quality of the probe and what you're using it for. If you're using it to control actual equipment like dosing kelk washer, a refugium light, CO2 scrubber, a calcium reactor, accuracy and reliability matters. Particularly in the case of a calcium reactor where the pH probe accuracy has a direct impact on the potency or concentration of calcium and alkalinity. In any of those cases, wait until the probe is constantly drifting in accuracy or total failure is unwise to say the least. Best recommendation is when the probe no longer holds reasonable calibration for two to three months or takes two to three times as long to get a stable calibration as a new probe. Both those things are good signs that you're approaching the end of usable life for the probe and you can replace it before serious inaccuracies show up or total failure. In fact, Josh at WWC shared with me on calcium reactors, they don't bother relying on periodic calibration as touch points or playing the game of maximum lifespan because accurate performance is critical in this application. There's so much coral in these tanks, it's just more cost effective to replace the probes entirely every nine months or so than gamble on trying to get a handful more months out of a partially used probe. The flip side of that coin is many of the other uses for a pH probe. If the pH probe isn't controlling anything and the only thing you use it for is one of the many indicators of general tank health and notifications when something is way off, well, absolute accuracy is just way less critical. In fact, I'd use it until it strays faster than I'd like and annoying to calibrate or simply fails. Preempting failure here is just less critical than when the probe is actually controlling equipment. I mentioned that earlier, the quality of the probe here is a factor as well. I think the lower demand applications, you can actually get away with a cheap single junction probe. In the higher demand applications, the double junction probe is much more critical. It's not super obvious what the difference is between a single and double junction probe, but it makes a huge longevity impact, holds calibration longer, higher degree of accuracy from a few fairly simple tweaks. We have a video over there which really dives into the lab versus standard grade probes. What's a junction? What's a single versus double? So you can get an idea of what you're actually getting. So you can check that out. See you all next week with the next batch of BRS TV Refacts.